it is now my pleasure to introduce Charlie Murphy, Professor of Management Practice and an MBA alum, class of 1974. Professor Murphy has taught at NYU Stern for more than a decade, following a successful, successful career as an investment banker and an electrical engineer. Many of you have taken his course in investment banking, and many of his former students now themselves hold high-level positions in financial service organizations. Charlie distills deep experience and knowledge into memorable and instructive anecdotes. He is a rich playbook, as it were, from which to draw, and many lessons learned to share. Today, Charlie will take a few minutes to share with the graduates what I didn't get around to telling you in the classroom. Please welcome to the lectern, Professor Charlie Murphy. If we were in Ireland, this would be called a holy, which is a big celebration. Unfortunately, my cousins aren't here with the beverage carts, but <laughs> that will come later. I was trying to figure out how to start this, and the joke between the dean and myself is he knows I never really write a speech. I kind of think about stuff as I'm walking around. And as I was reading the New York Times this morning, I saw the word kaleidoscope, and I kind of started laughing because I actually have one. So I went down to my office and I looked into the kaleidoscope trying to get my thoughts collected and I looked it up and sure enough there was these absolutely brilliant facets. And I said to myself, that was you. That was you two years ago. You were all the best, but you were all individuals. And then I turned it. And as you turn it, as you know, you wind up forming these spectacular <laughs> patterns, these geometric patterns that become absolutely beautiful. That's you now. Meaning what? Over the last two years, look at how many. <laughs> I'll get there, relax. <laughs> Behave yourselves or I'll talk about the Snapchat pictures I got from Puerto Rico. <laughs> look what you've become over the last two years, how many friends you have, how many different cultures you've met. You're a global person. The only note I have is, because I don't want to get it wrong, and he's my former partner and he would kill me, is a note that's from Larry Fink's, who's on our board, as you know, Larry Fink's annual shareholder meeting letter this year. And he says, we believe that teams with diversity of experience, backgrounds, and perspectives make better decisions and drive more innovation than homogeneous teams. That's what you are. Now, I'm an old guy, and one thing I'll say to you is, don't lose that. When you make the money and you will, that's the easy part. Just work hard and a little bit of luck and you've got it. It's good to hear parents, right? Don't lose what you have right now because the world's going to need it. And it's a very special gift. You're very lucky to have gone through the two years that you have. So appreciate it. Now if we were in class, I'd say this is module two and module two is a concern. And my concern is, as I walked down here, I had the iPod in and listening to a couple of tunes, like always. Everybody's saying, who's the weird old guy? And one of my favorites, Don Henley, came on, and he was singing this eclectic song, which I actually like, called Dirty Laundry. We live in a world with a lot of dirty laundry, meaning what? Well, in the song, he's an anchor for the network news, and he relates that the way he gets his ratings is by finding up dirt. Matter of fact, the refrain is something like, kick them when they're up, kick them when they're down. It's the world we live in today. There's a great German word that sums it up, which I heard, probably first heard in Zurich about 40 years ago, schadenfreude. There's a lot of schadenfreude in the world. Meaning what? Meaning I hope that person doesn't do well, because I really want to do well. It's a basic human characteristic that's not going to go away. Now, why is that important? It's important because the state of technology means the person sitting next to you right now is essentially a global TV station, a media company because of the phone. You're going to have it much harder than we had it in terms of staying on point, having a moral compass, being ethical, building a reputation, having integrity. How come? Because everybody's got you online, on the screen constantly. And the one comment I'll make is your reputation is everything. It takes your career to build. It takes five seconds to disappear. 
So work on that, and it's a continuous process. Over the rest of your life, you'll see how many people fail who don't keep that in the back of their mind. Module three, a commitment from you. Earlier this year, one of my favorite actors, Leonard Nimoy, died. Leonard Nimoy, as we know, is the iconic Mr. Spock. I was a side joke as I was sitting in my office trying to figure out how to get to this piece. I was looking at pictures of Spock on the internet, and suddenly I hit the wrong key and the dean came up. <laughs> and one interesting fact I'll give you to make you think about it a little bit, if you kind of draw those pointy ears on Peter, yeah. I'm convinced he's Vulcan. He's tall, he's lean, he's in great shape, he's unbelievably logical, and he's pretty smart. Now, why do I bring up Spock? Well, in <clears throat> one of my favorite movies, Spock saves the Enterprise, like always. And he goes down and turns off the reactor and winds up getting covered with whatever. And he's mortally wounded and he's dying, and Captain Kirk shows up, like always, at the last minute, and he's on the other side of a glass partition, and he says to Spock, why Spock? And Spock looks at him and says the very famous words, which are actually very important to me, as I will say to you in one minute, because the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the needs of the one. I actually say that or think about it every single day of my life. Why? Because there's a lot of people on this planet. You're the fortunate. You owe them. You're going to help fix their problems. You're going to help solve the two and a half billion more people when you're my age in terms of getting them water and sanitation and housing and health care and pensions and infrastructure. We've heard a lot about that over the last week. That's your obligation to society. Don't forget about it. Most people say they're problems. Murphy would say they're opportunities. Many of you will get incredibly wealthy working on those opportunities and solving those problems. So keep that in the back of your mind. Now, as faculty representative, <clears throat> I can say for my cohorts on the stage, who I obviously am biased in saying are the best, we'd like to thank you for sharing a major part of your lives for the last two years. And as a boy growing up in the Bronx in an apartment with one screen and one bathroom, think of that, students. <laughs> I frequently would watch Bob Hope give specials, and at the end of which he would always say, thanks for the memories. Congratulations. <laughs>